We have new details on the suspect in the murder of Lauren Heike. The 29-year-old was stabbed to death, left on a hiking trail in Phoenix. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum is here with the latest on the arrest. Justin. John Christina Zion Teasley is accused of first degree murder and he just got out of prison last November. Court documents say he would not admit to killing Lauren Heike. A motive is still unclear. The murder weapon has not been recovered. And yesterday, Teasley had a flight booked for Detroit. We're built this way. The Phoenix Police Department is built to chase these guys. My team is focused and dedicated and we find him. The autopsy of 29-year-old Lauren Heike reveals she was stabbed 15 times. She had self-defense wounds on her arms and hands. Phoenix police discovered her body on a hiking trail near Scottsdale Road and Mayo Boulevard last Saturday morning. Investigators say evidence indicated she was chased through a barbed wire fence. I do believe at this time that the attack was random. However, we have not concluded our investigation into that. Police say surveillance video of the suspect is 22-year-old Zion Teasley. He lived about a mile and a half away from where the murder happened. Detectives scoured through several hours of footage from last Friday. They say Heike walked from east to west on the trail and then out of the camera's view. At some point, Teasley is seen running after her, then away before returning to the spot her body was later found. Investigators pinged Teasley's cell phone to the area the same morning. Police say DNA from Heike's shoe matched Teasley, a convicted felon who served time in prison from July 2021 to November 2022 pleading guilty to armed robbery with a deadly weapon and disorderly conduct. He spent a little more than a year in jail of his three-year sentence. Police say Teasley was recently fired for being aggressive towards female co-workers. Stealing and management said he routinely carried a pocket knife. After his arrest, police say Teasley spoke to detectives about growing up as a Christian, struggling with his sexuality and his concern about the salvation of his soul. According to court documents, he said, there's no freaking way I'm here for a sex crime. I haven't been with anyone for a long time. Teasley recognized Heike from the news, telling police he wanted to look like her, but could not recall meeting her. When asked if he planned the murder, Teasley said, quote, I'm definitely not the person who plans to kill another person. If I was going to do something like that, it wouldn't be premeditated. And we've confirmed Teasley's mother works for the Maricopa County Adult Probation Department. I asked if she assists police in any way. We are told she refused to speak to the authorities. Currently, Teasley is held on a $1 million cash bond. Live in the studio, Justin Lum, Fox 10 News. Another witness from Arizona taking the stand in the Lori Vallow murder trial. She's accused of using her religious beliefs to justify killing her two kids. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum continues to follow what's happening in court and joins us live now with more. Justin. And John, Christina, as you know, we have seen multiple detectives from the Chandler Police Department testify regarding the murder of Lori Vallow's fourth husband, Charles Vallow, but this is the first time we've seen someone with the Gilbert Police Department take the stand. This is Ryan Piller, an officer with GPD. He was the lead detective investigating the attempted murder of Brandon Boudreau. Boudreau is Vallow's ex-nephew-in-law. The prosecution has established the alleged relig religious beliefs of Vallow, with several witnesses saying she identified certain people as dark spirits, like Boudreau. In October of 2019, Gilbert PD says Vallow's late brother, Alex Cox, shot Boudreaux's Tesla as he pulled into his driveway. The suspect vehicle was a Jeep Wrangler, usually driven by Vallow's daughter, Tylee Ryan. But Tylee and her little brother, J.J. Vallow, had not been seen for almost a month at the time. Police would recover that Jeep, and Pillar learned that Tammy Daybell died 17 days after the shooting. Tammy was Chad Daybell's wife of nearly 30 years. He married Lori Vallow just weeks after Tammy's death. As a multi-agency effort focused on finding J.J. and Tylee, Pillar reminded the court how Vallow lied about J.J. being with her friend, Melanie Gibb in Arizona. Pillar even surveilled two homes Gibb lived at here in the Valley. So we set up pole cams at Melanie Gibbs' residence because, again, she, we couldn't contact her and she was not in the state of Arizona during my conversation with her. Um, so we set up pole cams, which are cameras that monitor 24-7 a specific location. 
And obviously, J.J. Vallow was never at Melanie Gibbs' home, and Gibb would eventually cooperate with police in the search. Several months later, authorities did find the remains of J.J. and Tylee in the backyard of Chad Daybell, who's also facing several murder charges. And this afternoon, a status conference was head, held for Daybell. The judge has yet to decide on when his trial will happen, but prosecutors and the defense have looked at June of 2024 as a potential time frame. Live in the control room, Justin Lum, Fox 10 News. Thanks, Justin. For more on the backstory of this case, and it is lengthy. We have a 30-minute special, though, that can break it all down on our Fox 10 YouTube page. It's all there for you. It's called Murder, Money, and the End of Days, the Lori Vallow story. You can scan the QR code there on your screen to watch or go right to our YouTube page. Hi County, an elderly man is accused of killing another man and living in the victim's home. Investigators booked 76-year-old Terry Welfenberg into jail. They went to the home of 67-year-old John McCabe last month in Ash Fork after the post office reported that he failed to pick up his mail for more than a year. Well, deputies said that Welfenberg told them that McCabe left the area two years ago. But during a search of the property, detectives say they found a skull fragment and other bones in a fire pit. They say a medical ID bracelet and a wallet belonging to McCabe were also discovered. Five thanks 601. We're starting with the Fox 10 News Alert. A man found shot this morning just outside an elementary school in Mesa. Yeah, Desiree is live for us near Wrecker and McKellops Roads with the latest on this. Desiree, good morning. Good morning, yes, and even more specifically, we're standing right here on Alta Mesa Drive near McLellan, and we're right across from Ramon S. Mendoza Elementary School. So here you can see right in front of the school, we have Mesa Police. We have a Forensic Services Crime Scene Unit here as well, along with detectives who are now looking into this shooting. There was reports early this morning that a man had been shot. So what we know at this point in time is that Mesa Police tell us that they got at least two calls on this. One person was a security guard who said that he heard a shot nearby. He went looking, and that's when he found a man who had been shot. And then the other caller was a woman who apparently was with that gentleman at the time. She was only able to get out that a man had been shot before her phone died. Uh, so when Mesa police arrived, that's exactly what they found. And they found a man uh, suffering from a gunshot wound. At this point in time, they tell us that it is a non-life-threatening gunshot wound, so he was taken to the hospital. Uh, he should be okay, but he wasn't really able to give police much information about his shooter, uh, maybe what that person looked like or uh, why this started um, to begin with. So right now, uh, we're here on scene. We're waiting for an update from police, and I'll step out of the way. You guys can see it's a very active um, crime scene here. They have the tape up blocking off a portion of the road. Um, so we'll send it back to you. Story unfolding there, uh, just literally right out in front of the Espinosa School in Mesa. We'll keep track of that for sure. Reports of two people just before midnight last night in Phoenix. One of them is a one-year-old baby. This incident took place near Thomas Road and 43rd Avenue. Gunshots broke out during an altercation between the adult and two other men. Both victims taken to the hospitals, non-life-threatening injuries, we're told, the investigation ongoing. 